Hello everybody, I am Will, or Hexparrot, creator of MineOS. Today's video is about installing the MineOS web user interface, the latest iteration of the MineOS Minecraft scripts. Um, these scripts differ from previous distributions where it's actually intended to be installed on official stock media. Uh, these instructions work for any distribution that uses the apt get package manager, which includes Debian, Ubuntu, Turnkey basically anything that uses the apt-get package manager for binaries you can use these instructions alright what I have here on the left is a new installation of Ubuntu 13.04 so I'm gonna go ahead and get to it through putty and as usual the first thing you're gonna do is use apt-get update to update all the package repository information following that we're gonna install all the dependencies one thing you'll notice that's different about the recent or these scripts is that it uses Cherry Pi web server, which is a Python based web server rather than Hiawatha. Um, they'll be operating on a different port, so you still will be able to have a web server up on port 80 or whatever port you choose. And another thing you'll notice about these scripts is it will update itself using Git, which is another dependency we have, which is really terrific at version management and keeping this thing up to date, as well as allowing you to make changes to this scripts without them being overridden by all my upstream updates. Alright, so I'm going ahead and installing all these dependencies. I'm installing OpenJDK 7. You're welcome to use any Java that you choose. OpenJDK that was recommended for its ease and uh, just getting the JRE is the only thing that's necessary. After that we're going to go ahead and use Git to install all the MineOS scripts or to download them all. And then we're going to install them into the init scripts followed by uh, getting it started. So let's go into the USR games directory, try to recreate a familiar file structure as before. So all the files are going to USR games Minecraft. Step into the Minecraft directory. We're going to change a setting on Git to make sure that all of our executable tags are maintained through every update. And then we're going to make a couple of files executable. Next, I'm going to copy the MineOS web UI startup script to the initd subsystem. I'm going to make it runnable, or executable rather, and then I'm going to add it to the startup scripts that will run. Next, this Minecraft script is actually for all the different servers that are set to start at boot. Make it executable and then add them as well. Finally, I'm going to copy the minos.conf file to the etc directory, which will allow you to modify uh, how the web UI starts up, what port it opens and listens on, and a couple of other small things like that. Alright, finally, let's see here, let's generate a SSL. This will be used as a self-signed certificate so every single time you connect to your web UI, it's uh, under the HTTPS um, service rather than HTTP. And then here, this is the command we would use to start and stop the script. You'll only need to use this now because otherwise it would be taken care of on each subsequent reboot. So I'm going to go ahead and start the script. And now the web UI is already running. Let's see here we're going to connect to the port using HTTPS. This is to be expected because it's a self-signed certificate. And then I'm going to log in as the root user. Make sure that your root user is set. And there's my password. If you ever have someone looking over your shoulder and don't want to have it showing, make sure you can just hit the hide password. Once you are logged in, you can see the new web user interface. It's going to take a second to load because there's a lot of JavaScript it's loading for the first time. But in a moment, what we're going to see is the load averages, and we're going to see a number of other different things showing up here if the page is wide enough. All right. So the web UI is different than the previous one, obviously. There are going to be a couple of different things to take note of. One, there's a big distinction between logging in as root and as an unprivileged user. Uh, when you're logged in as root, you'll notice here you can manage all the servers, but you cannot create new ones. 
So what you will want to do as root is you will want to manage the profiles. Now as server profiles you can see a little bit more information about why root makes a difference when it comes to um, making profiles. I'll go ahead and create an easy vanilla stock profile. Uh, if you've used the previous web UI or you want to use a profile or a server jar that is not the one that is listed here, you can create a custom profile and enter in all the information here. I went ahead and I created a stock profile and I updated it. Now I'm going to go ahead and step out and use an unprivileged user, which is how most uh, Minecraft or how most logins should be for using the web UI using an unprivileged user. All right, we'll see here there are no different servers listed right now, but we're going to go ahead and create a server. And you can see group ownership here. By default, it will be created using the uh, primary group of your user. In this case, it would be Will. But if you wanted to create an additional group and assign group ownership of that server, you go ahead and enter it here make it easy for users other than Will, part of that group, to manage every aspect of the Minecraft server. Alright, I'll go ahead and start the server on boot. My backups happen every six hours. You can choose your own settings. And also you'll want to choose the different Java memory heaps that you're going to allocate for your server. I'll click Submit. You can see it's now down here and offline. When we click on the server name, any groups that Will is part of, you can you can easily assign it to someone else. Uh, you can create backups, create archives, and go ahead and start the server. And at this point, it is up and running. Uh, when it's ready, it's going to refresh this information to show you it's online, how many players are online, and how much the heap it's using. This doesn't auto refresh, so if you ever want update information, you can just click on server status again. Um, other features of the web UI that you want to keep note of is the restore points. As you make restore points, they will show up on that that page, which will allow you to see how much space they're taking, as well as whether you want to remove them, etc. So I'll just go ahead and create a couple of restore points just to demonstrate. Okay, you can see here all the different restore points I have just made especially if they're on a regular interval like I had for six hours. You can see how much space they're taking and if you need to you can also remove them by choosing one restore point and it will remove all the restore points older than that point. Alright, let's go ahead and stop the server. You have an option between stop and kill. Kill is if the server has somehow stalled. Stop would be the proper way to gracefully shut down a server. We take a look at the console you can see it went through all the normal process of stopping the server and going through all the safe saving chunks to make sure that there's no loss of any information. Um, let's see here. With archives, you can also create those. You can see how much space gets used up by archives and how long ago first one was and when your most recent one was. Same thing for archives. You're free to remove them if, you, if they're taking up too much space so you know you're never going to need them. And also you have the option to create a new server from any given archive you've ever taken, uh, snapshot you've ever taken care of, or you can delete them if, again, you don't want them taking that space. Um, we also have the server properties configs. Uh, anytime you can just go ahead and toggle them on or off. These things are live, so you don't have to hit save. They're automatically saved. If they're in a te text box, you'll actually notice they're saved. After you make a change, you hit enter, it turns green to indicate that it was saved. Going to the server config, we can see the same features we saw from the create a server page. You can change the profile if you need to, if you've created a different one. Um, you can have different Java arguments, change the heap sizes, and the inter different intervals. And then finally, creating server from an archive. This would be important if you uh, have an archive from a, an existing server from somewhere else. You'll want to put these files into var games minecraft import and any archives that are in this directory 
will show up here where you can create a server from just like with archives here. Uh, that pretty much takes care of how to get started with the web user interface. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know via the Google Groups or through email. And have a great day.